Welcome back to Homeopathy at Home with Melissa. Hey, Melissa. Hey. Um, I'm really excited to be back. It's yeah. been a little bit since we've recorded. Yeah. So today, before we get into our podcast, we had a really good question come in. So we thought we would ask the question here, and Melissa, you can answer it for all of you to hear. Yeah. So I'm just going to read it, and then you can give your answer. Okay. All right. It says, hi, Melissa. You shared with me a great video about how Boyron makes homeopathy, but I wonder how does carcinosum not give someone cancer? I'm nervous to take it because I don't know how it isn't damaging cells since it is itself a dangerous mutation, AKA cancer. I'm thinking along the lines of why I avoid GMO foods, etc. Can you shed some light on this? <clears throat> yeah, so that's such a great question. And um, so carcinosin is um, a nosode and it's made from the tissue of a breast cancer, um, a, a, breast can a breast tumor, cancerous breast tumor. And so my reply to her was, Homeopathic remedies, no matter what they're made from, stimulate the body systems to work like they're supposed to, thereby causing the body to heal itself. After a 6X or so, and talking about potency, um, there's no original substance left in the medicine. And so it's now the energy that's stimulating your body because water holds memory. And then I shared with her some videos about water and how... Um, a lot of people are starting to figure out and scientists are starting to see how that water can hold memory. And so the water holds the memory of the, of the medicine, the homeopathic remedy. So, um, yeah, so we never have to worry about remedies aren't going to give you cancer. They're not going to give you anything. Like uh, so I just reaction. wanted to, we get that question sometimes too. If you're allergic to bees, can you take apis? Right. Um, since that's made from bee venom, would it be yeah. considered venom? It's, it's made from the actual honeybee. So it's the, the honeybee crushed up. Oh, the whole, the whole bee. bee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I didn't know that. Okay. So yeah. in the same way that works just like a nose note or something would, where we don't have to be afraid of it. Right. And since we said that, I just want to say to all my bee loving friends, it was one bee a long time ago, and we're still making the same remedy from that one bee. So I don't want anybody to think that we're using bees every single day to make all these apis remedies. We're not. It was one bee that we used. Not we. I wasn't around. I wasn't alive when they made it. <laughs> they. You were not a part of the bee. No, I was not. <laughs> so. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, today for our topic, we're going to be talking about herpes, cold sores, and shingles. So they're all related. So we're just going to yeah. cover them all today, hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I wanted to, to quickly say that as um when I edit these um, these podcast episodes, um, I notice that my internet breaks up. And sometimes you can't understand me. So definitely stop me if I'm starting to break up. Um, okay. And it's okay. I mean, I'm not saying you, yeah, I'm just saying. But I you do hear it in the talking. recordings too. It's yeah. Not just yeah, it's in the recording. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I apologize to anybody who, I don't think it's been bad enough that you can't understand yeah. what I'm saying mm -hmm. ever. The one time I think it got bad, you stopped me. And then, you know, I repeated whatever I said. But so one day we're going to get high speed internet out here in the country. And then I'm going to complain that I'm exposed. to high speed. I was going to say, it's like a, a blessing and a curse because yeah. the fact that you can't get it. Yeah. Means you're living out where you want to be living. Yeah. There's no, there are no, I did a tower research before we moved here. There are no towers within the recommended. I can't remember. It was two years ago now. It's pretty um, miles from us. So we don't have that, that the bad stuff from the towers, but then we have satellite internet. <laughs> <laughs> there could be worse things. Everybody's right. doing well. This is real life. Right. I That's like right. that about your podcast. So, <laughs> okay. 
So let's start with shingles. Okay. So shingles is herpes zoster. And um, according to the CDC, shingles is a painful rash that develops on one side of the face or the body. The rash consists of blisters that typically scab over in seven to 10 days and fully clears up within two to four weeks. I have been helping so many people recently with shingles, um, uh, an alarming amount of people. I don't know, you know, why or what's going on. Um, I'm sure there are lots of theories out there and lots of people who have the answer right now. They're like, I know what's going on. Um, but also before the rash appears, people often have pain, itching, or tingling in the area where it will develop. So whether you're getting shingles or a cold sore or general herpes before you, before the, the outbreak, you can feel a tingly, itchy sensation where it's going to be. And so, it, you know, I think most people, more people have cold sores than, than shingles or, um, or general herpes. And so you probably have felt that if you've, you know, if you have that. Um, and most commonly the rash occurs in a single stripe around either the left or the right side of the body. In other cases, the rash occurs on one side of the face. Shingles on the face can affect the eye and cause vision loss. Um, yeah, I think this is why people get so afraid of some yeah. of these things when you read worst yeah. case scenarios. Yeah, this is what this is what some reading from the CDC right now is what they're saying about it. So we have to remember. What do they? <laughs> <laughs> normally do like you're gonna get canceled <laughs> melissa don't say it <laughs> what do they normally do it's you know there's a lot of scare tactics out there so anyway and there's there's probably truth to that anyway but um so in rare cases usually in people with weakened immune systems the rash may be more widespread on the body and look similar to a chickenpox rash so other symptoms of shingles include fever, headache, chills, upset stomach, and um, shingles has, it can be part of a, this is probably why I'm seeing so many cases, long COVID. So after you've had COVID, you might break out in shingles and then have trouble with that. So now the can treatment- Now really quickly, because I get confused sometimes and I'm, hopefully there are other people who do. The connection between chicken pox and shingles. Yeah, so they are both herpes zoster and you have to have had chicken pox as a kid in order to have shingles as an adult. So it's, in, it's almost like it. So is it almost like the virus is dormant in your body, like chicken pox is in your body and this is, it wakes it back up as a more severe thing later? Um, because is it chicken pox a good thing to get as a child i'm bringing in a whole rabbit trail so you might have to clear, clear up all this chicken pox shingle stuff for me no it's good because i was just trying to i was hoping he was i know you're done okay um so okay so i believe that we that getting chicken pox as a child is a good idea because especially if you're not if you don't want to, if you're going the more natural route with, with your healthcare journey, then um, you don't want to get it as a teenager or an adult. Because um, it's much more severe, so, right? Usually it's much more severe, much more severe and painful. And yes, lasts longer. It's better to get it as a kid if you're going to get it at all. Um, so then you have lifelong immunity to chickenpox. Then once you become usually an older adult, if you've had chicken pox, you could have, shing um, yeah, get shingles because yes, herpes zoster um, resides, I believe in, in your spine or in the spinal fluid. Um, it's in your, it's in there and it's like a, a virus that can just pop up anytime. Stress makes it worse. Um, there are some foods that can make it uh, worse and better. And so, you know, I tried to get my, my youngest to chicken pox a couple, three times and they never got it. So I don't know, you know, are they naturally immune? Are they, 
did they really do they get it never gotten it symptoms? kyle never had it paul's never had it no did you say kyle's never had it yeah no he's never had it paul's never had it either that's so funny he did eventually i think when he was in middle school got the vaccine um okay. but he has never had chicken pox so i don't know yeah. i did look it up and it is you're right about the the virus the varicella or whatever virus goes dormant mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and it looks like it's a it, there's a term dorsal root ganglion ganglion Wow. A group of cells responsible, cell bodies responsible for the transmission of sensory messages. It is in the neuro, the nervous system. So, mm -hmm. yep. That so, was pretty good. Look at you. Yeah. <laughs> so when you, okay. So the, the mainstream treatment for shingles is antivirals. Anytime the word anti is in front of a medicine, no, keep it away from me unless I'm dying. Okay. I don't, want, more about that. I don't want, I don't want anti anything anti. Okay. Antibiotics kill all the bacteria, right? So they're killing yep. even the good guys and they destroy the gut and the microbiome anti, um, anti fungals. It kills anti is opposite. That's allopathic. It kills everything. And it, and so it doesn't uproot conditions. It's, it's just allopathy. Allopathy is anti because it's opposite homeopathy is same. So we're like cures like, and we're trying to, we're trying to stimulate the immune system with the same um, remedy. And so it's antivirals and over the counter pain medications. None of that uproots anything. So, okay, fine. You get through it. Maybe you're in pain or whatever for, for a week or two um, or even three or four. And then yeah, it says up to four weeks. So then you could get it again anytime. But if you use homeopathy, you're less likely to have an outbreak of shingles again. And you are, um, if you do, it should be more mild, shorter in duration. And that's what homeopathy does. That's the reason. And then, of course, there's a shingles vaccine. So remedies for shingles, Roostox. Roostox is number one for herpes zoster. So herpes zoster is your, your shingles, your chicken pox, your cold sores. It encompasses that whole, all of those things um, <clears throat> is herpes zoster. And so Roostox is great for fever, blister, fever blisters, cold sores, mouth and throat filled with herpes. Can you imagine how painful that is? Even... So I had a friend whose um, children got chicken pox not too long ago, and we were doing one of the, we were doing the live class of the mentorship program, and her kids had chicken pox and fevers, and um, one one daughter had a sore throat. And so we were all like taking her case and trying to help her figure out sore throat remedies. So then when we came back together two weeks later to meet, she informed us that um because she had tried all the sore throat remedies but she had chicken pox in her throat and that's why it hurt so bad that's mm -hmm. terrible poor thing mm -hmm. i wonder if that would be so if this is is it because it's the herpes zoster virus or would that work for like hand foot and mouth you know how some adults especially get those huge ulcers and sores in their mouth and throat maybe or would I'm that be sure. maybe a different remedy i'm not sure Okay. So blisters would be apis. Okay. If there's blisters, then I would think of apis um, and, or nat mirror because nat mirrors are water balancer. So where there's water, too much water or not enough water, we think of nat mirror. <clears throat> so Roostox is um, very painful. These would be burning, um, you know, pustules or outbreaks and they cannot eat or drink. Um, variolinum, variolinum is best for herpes and shingles. If the herpes keeps coming back, give this remedy, then you're treating the tendency to get it. So variolinum is, um, a nosode, right? Because it's made from, um, varicella is the, is okay. the, 
So that may not be the best one to actually treat it when you have a case of shingles or something, but it wouldn't, use it to uproot. To uproot like, the tendency to get it. So if you keep getting it, you keep getting it yeah. over and over again, then you need to think of varialinum. Okay. And then another remedy is antimonium crude, antimonium crudum, 6C every three hours during the outbreak and hypericum 200C every 30 minutes for very, if, it, if there's very severe pain, you're not gonna do it every 30 minutes for days. You're gonna do this for, you know, a, a, ch a chunk of time on the first day. Um, and then, then move it out to, you know, a few times a day, maybe every three to six hours um, or just twice a day for mild pain. And then Belladonna 6C every three hours for fever. We're still talking about shingles here. Um, <clears throat> so, so because it is um, in the nervous system, that's why hypericum is also gonna be a big one. Hypericum is a great nerve pain remedy. So it heals the nerves, it, it helps a lot with nerve pain. So you're always gonna think of you're breaking hypericum up just a little for bit. nerve pain. Oh, Emma, okay, let's see. I could Maybe. understand what you said, but okay. you just chopped up a little bit. Okay, all right. So, okay, so here's some other, um, and frequency. So, vaccininum. Am I, is that even right? <laughs> got your book for you? I'm going to look. look up, yeah, vaccininum, no, so, yeah. Is that it? Awesome. Yay. Yeah. Yep, so vaccininum. Um, 15 C twice per day or you don't see 15 very often. That's interesting. I know it's, it's very specific mm -hmm. or roost talks 15 C mixed with apis 15 C. Mm. And that would be, you mm. decide on how often to give it. Um, cantharis 15 C four times a day. And this, these are ores. So you just pick one, you know, first. Um, or Croton Tig 15C four times a day. This is for eruptions with itching. So you go down the list or, you know, try something for, I always encourage you to try something for 24 hours in these acute conditions. So the bears- you you a situation where you would, um, at the onset, maybe you feel that burning and you, you feel it coming on. And so you maybe take, I think, um, if you started with roost talks, let's say. I would. Do you switch as the as they progress? Like if you start getting that um, itching and the burning, would you switch or the eruptions with itching? I am not sure that I would switch. I think it would depend, but I might add. So if the okay. nerve pain starts, then I would add the hypericum. Yeah. If, yeah, if the itching and burning starts, then I would add I think I, I would definitely start with roost talks. I pretty much okay. always start with roost talks. And so you can maybe add as you're moving through, if your symptoms are changing, like any illness, I feel like it would, right? Like it usually gets worse. It's not like homeopathy halts it altogether, usually in this kind of stuff. Right. But can it move your body through it quickly, but you may still want to add a couple of remedies as you go. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, and thank you for saying that. We have to remember homeopathy is not this, it's not allopathy. Yeah. We're not taking a remedy so that we can stop everything immediately. Although sometimes that can happen. We're taking a remedy um, to stimulate our immune systems to uproot conditions and move your body through the condition faster and easier than if you didn't have it at all. It's almost and like we're embracing people, those, like embracing yeah. an illness and letting it work letting our body work through it and learn from it so that next time it really is stronger. That's so beautiful. But I think, so I think I'm saying that because I, I think that's the biggest struggle I have seen now very mm -hmm. often mm -hmm. is people feel like it's not working. Yeah. And that's I okay. even remember when I felt like that, it was so easy to look at a situation and get frustrated with like homeopathy is just not working yeah. because what I thought it meant to work Mm -hmm. was not mm -hmm. what I needed to be looking for. And I've even been really encouraged looking at, as I've been sitting in consults with you and seeing pictures of things and I can identify 
healing now mm-hmm. that I would not have seen yeah. three years ago. So yeah. I just wanted to mention that in case you're that person, you're frustrated or like discouraged. Mm-hmm. And um, especially when you're in this much pain, it's yeah. you want something to stop it right now. I can understand that. I really can. Um, but I love that's so beautiful what you just said that it it you know that it's teaching that the body's learning how to deal with this and it is there's a cleansing that happens mm-hmm. in illness there's this you know we go through this thing and then we're stronger well you know and what it makes me think of forest fires too i'm sorry I get on so many tangents today but yeah. like they're not i know sometimes they are bad or worse than they should be or whatever but they're even, I remember learning about that, the part of the ecosystem that a forest fire plays and how that provides all of these things for new growth and stuff. Yeah. And that's essentially kind of how a virus can work in our body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. It's so good. So the Banerjee protocol for shingles is the first line is antimonium crudum 6C every three hours. So you're going to try that for I would say 24 hours if you choose to go with the Banerjee protocol. So if you choose to start with Roost Talks, then do that, you know, and do that for 24 hours and then add remedies as the symptoms change. But if you choose to go with the Banerjee protocol, I would do first line for 24 hours. If there's no change, nothing better, no change at all, then, um, oh, also, excuse me, and still in the first line, if there's a fever, then Belladonna 3, and um, you choose how frequent to give that, but also remember, we don't want to give Belladonna 3 to a child under two years old. So you want to um, stick with Belladonna 30C and up for children under two years old. And then Hypericum 200 for the pain. So that's the first line Banerjee protocol. The second line Banerjee protocol is Thuya 30 mixed with Arsenicum 200 every three hours. In case of acute burning pain, add Hypericum 200 until there's relief. And then the third line Banerjee protocol is to relieve um, to relieve post herpes neuralgia. If Hypericum 200 fails for acute pain, then Roostox 30C and Hypericum 200C every three hours alternately or um, are often helpful. So alternately means Roostox at three, Hypericum at six, Roostox at nine, Hypericum at 12. So every three hours you're taking the other remedy that you didn't take last time. So that's shingles. Get these remedies and be ready, you know, so that if you feel something, if you start feeling a tingling, burning, itching sensation, you know, and you haven't had shingles before or if you've had it before and you know what it feels like. A lot of these are pretty common ones to have for other things, especially if you've, you're familiar with the Banerjee protocol. The only yeah. ones are those 15 C's, but I think yeah. you have enough options outside of those. Yeah, absolutely. So maybe, yeah. <clears throat> so herpes, genital herpes is an STD caused by two types of viruses, herpes simplex virus type one, which is also known as HSV one and herpes simplex virus type two, which is known as HSV two. And so HSV-1 often causes oral herpes, which can result in cold sores or fever blisters on or around the mouth. However, most people with oral herpes do not have any symptoms. Most people with oral herpes get it during childhood or young adulthood. So it's just, just naturally, you know, they, they get a, a family member, just um, a regular right non-sexual, here. just um after you okay said, what did you hear me say last i heard you say most people get it with um childhood or young adulthood and you were i think you were explaining situation how they might get that yeah, yeah so and so you know not um a non in a non-sexual way just you know kissing aunt margaret or you know drinking after somebody like sharing and, a straw so saliva can transmit hsv yes yes okay. and um i'm just thinking of of a person who had a, a big outbreak on her <clears throat> lips and when she came over and and my children were little she had a milkshake and they wanted a sip and I turned around and there she there they were sipping on and I was like 
You did not. Well, you do hear that. about in little babies. They talk about that. I mean, there's, that makes a lot of moms really nervous, but like somebody kissing a baby who may have that. And if you don't have symptoms, that's probably a pretty dangerous one. I, I always thought it was only contagious if you had open sores. <laughs> that's what I thought too. So maybe they can't spread it if you don't have symptoms, like if yeah. you're just a carrier and you don't know, but you've gotten it from someone, I'm not sure. But so the doctors will say, no, that a person with genital herpes, you know, if you, ha- if they can give somebody else herpes, even if they're, they don't have an outbreak. So, I okay. don't know, you know, I don't know how, I don't know where the truth lies in that, but um, yes, I was very, very upset that that happened. And um, you know, I just, they have strong immune systems and I tried, like I said, three times to get them chicken pox and they never did get it. So I'm just trusting the Lord. I mean, really, that's all I can do. And that, you know, in that instance, really? what are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so, um, the CDC says that there's no cure for genital herpes, but homeopathy says you can uproot that. Yes, you can. <laughs> yeah. And Okay, so maybe maybe if you were to draw some fluid out and test it, then maybe there would still be virus present, but you can, up at the very least, you can uproot the tendency to have outbreaks, which is where the pain and all, you know, all of the, the terribleness goes. Mm-hmm. I don't know for sure if homeopathy can uproot the entire virus out of your body. I don't know. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it could. So remedies for genital herpes, Natmur is number one. Natmur, Natrum muraticum. And so you would you would consider Natmur if there's a history of grief in this person, if they get cold sores, fever, blister, blisters, vesicles around the lips or, or in the mouth that burn and sting. Um, worse with acidic and salty foods, of course, anytime there's an open thing that really hurts. Um, or if it comes on after emotional upset. So in talking about <clears throat> genital herpes, if they have a if they have a lot of stress or an emotional upset and then they have an outbreak, then you'll think of that they, they might benefit from that mirror. Um, graffitis is another one. Graffitis is great for um, herpes, especially where there are old scars that don't heal. And um, herpes in the crook of the limbs, elbows, knees, groin, neck, and behind the ears. Oh, so so that can happen. And you know, mamas, you can also get herpes on your nipples. So if you have a thing, you know, if you have a, a sore, you don't want to be feeding your baby. But, um, but listen, I have known many, 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 many a mama with herpes, not on her nipples that breastfeeds her baby and they're 100% fine. There's nothing wrong. But so don't let that stress you out or worry about. But if you do get herpes on your nipples, you definitely don't want to be breastfeeding your baby. And like at all, you don't want to even pump because that's in contact. Right. With just, just during the, I would say during the outbreak. Oh, right. Okay. Take remedy, yeah. And take remedies because wow. even I can't imagine the pain of that. Right. But listen, because even with hepatitis, if a mom, um, ha- if a mom has hepatitis, we tell her she can breastfeed, but not if there are cracks, open cracks or sores on her nipples. Okay. And that always highly concerned me because that baby can be nursing and suddenly, you know, like. They get, cra- they can get cracked and so easy. I- well, it starts, I mean, it has to start somewhere. Like it usually starts sure. while they're nursing. Soreness. Yeah. So it's, so yeah, it's probably going to get sore first. It's not just going to suddenly pop into a crack, but okay. if your nipples start getting sore while breastfeeding and you have, um, you have hepatitis, you want to stop putting that baby to the breast. Okay. So back to <laughs> talking about all the things yep, back yep. to, um, general herpes. So um, Thuya. Thuya may follow Natmur if Natmur clears it right up, but it keeps coming back. Mm-hmm. So let's say you took Natmur and it clears it up, but then it comes back in a few weeks or a month. It just keeps coming back. Then okay, just move on to Thuya. 
Um, Thuya has just lots of warts, even venereal warts, um, vaginal and urethral discharge, STDs galore, um, sinusitis and herpes, vag You cut totally out right now. I don't know if you can hear me. You just have genital herpes and when Natmir clears it up, am I breaking up again? You oh, paused it says for quite a while. Oops, you know, <laughs> what'd you hear? I don't know if you can hear me. I really did not hear um, any of that. Okay. Hold on. We were talking about Thuya, if not Mira clears it up, but it keeps coming back. Well, and we had just finished going on a, oh, another rabbit trail about hepatitis. Uh oh. Oh, okay. We're back. Yes, okay. Okay. So yeah, my hotspot just turned off and it went to internet. Um, okay, so what, what's the last thing you heard clearly? Um, Thuya may follow Natmir if Natmir clears it up, but it keeps coming back. Okay. And did you hear me say all the things about venereal warts, STD, no. sinusitis? it. Oh. <laughs> it was a good okay. chunk of pause. Yeah. <laughs> was I paused like? Yeah, so you weird. totally were. Not too, <laughs> not too bad, but. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, so Thuya, you can consider Thuya just for the fact that you have used that mirror, it works well, but it keeps coming back. But you might also consider Thuya if you have, um, if there are venereal warts, um, vaginal and urethral discharge, STD, sinusitis, vaginitis, and herpes. All those things would indicate the use of Thuya. All right. Um, <clears throat> A protocol that I grabbed from joeatcalabrese.com is Merck Saw or Merck Viv 200 twice per day and Arsenicum Album 200 twice per day. So the Arsenicum Album would only be used if there's itching and burning and or burning. If the itching and or burning are present, then don't use Arsenicum, just use Merck Saw or the Merck Viv. All right, last few remedies for herpes. Metarinum is a nosode. Um, Natmur, sepia, thuya we just talked about. The Nariani herpes mix um, in a 30C. I think it's Nariani herpes mix 60 in a 30C. So Google that and you know see where you can find it, what pharmacy you can find it at. That, that's one to consider. And then Cantharis. So you would consider cantharis if there's violent burning, um, cutting pains, worse for urination with lots of burning. So this person might need to get in the shower or or just to just to urinate because it burns and stings so bad. They can't just sit on the toilet and go. They have to get have the water sit in the bathtub or the shower. You know, have the water running so they can um, so they can actually urinate. And then Proteus is a bowel nosode. And Proteus is, um, has herpetic eruptions with pain out of proportion to the lesion. So the lesion might be really tiny, but the pain is huge. And you're like, this little tiny thing? Um, worse from drinking wine. So they might have more outbreaks when they, after they drink wine and better from resting in the mountains. So, Maybe while they're in the mountains on vacation, they don't have any outbreaks ever. Or maybe, maybe you have a mountain home and while you're there, you never have any outbreaks. And then when you come to the city or other, whatever area you do. Um, and then the last one is roost tox. And roost tox pains are tearing, shooting, stitching, worse at night with restlessness, from discomfort. So that's how you differentiate between those, those remedies. That's how you would decide which ones to use um, based on those few little symptoms. And that's specific to genital herpes. That's right. That's all genital herpes. Okay. So we'll do cold sores. If you want to do cold sores, Brie, you can, and then you'll, you'll kind of see um, 
that it's there's a lot of the same remedies, but there's a lot of extra care. You broke up right at the end. You said you'll you'll probably see that there are a lot of the same remedies. Same remedies, yeah. But there are a few extras. And then yeah. do you want to do cold sores? Okay. Yeah, I can do cold sores. Um, as we mentioned before, cold sores is the HSV one often. So that's often what causes oral herpes. And that often results in cold sores or fever blisters on or around the mouth. However, most people with oral herpes do not have any symptoms. I think that's interesting. And I wonder how you would even know if you should treat it. You just don't, I guess. You just don't. You Which just trust the Lord. Right. You trust the Lord and you only kiss your husband or your wife. Okay. Yes. Teenagers. <laughs> only kiss your husband or wife. And then you don't have to worry about this. You don't have to worry about it anymore. And this is probably why this can get past easily as from non-sexual contact, even for kids or young adults. So yeah. mm -hmm. it could or couldn't be passed in. Not kissing okay. People. Can I interrupt and say all of this, even, even general herpes, even if you were to have intercourse with the person with the, with an outbreak, general herpes, <clears throat> all of this depends on your immune system. Mm, yeah, you, that's so true. If, some people just don't get it. They just won't get it. And, and some people are, are more prone and will get it easily. Well, you know, just from a little, a little yeah. regular kiss on the mouth. So it's all about the immune system. This is and not things trigger different people also. And your immune system fluctuates for various reasons and your history, even your parents' immune system. So, yeah. um, that's a really good reminder. Yeah. Um, calc solve three X or six X two to three times per day for cold sores. Mm -hmm. um, that's a cell salt. So generally you'll see it in a six X, but um, three X is also a good option. And often you see cell salts taken two or three times a day. I feel like that's a pretty standard. Standard, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, again, antimonium crudum six every three hours. Mm -hmm. Possibly Natmure. This is similar to genital herpes too. These are for people maybe with a history of grief, um, vesicles and cracks, right? Around lips or mouth that burn and sting. It's worse for acidic and salty foods and may come on after emotional upset and probably stress. I would think that yeah. I've heard that can really contribute. So I think for all of these, but especially for cold sores, kelp carb 30 C once per day that's a protocol Melissa generally shares for immunity all around. Mm -hmm. So yep. that would be great. Do it once per day for a long time, like yeah. a year, six to 12 months at six least. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and what you'll probably see is that I, you take cal cal carb, sorry, every day and possibly these other remedies when you have outbreaks and hopefully what you'll see is that you won't have them as often or they won't be right. as severe. Um, and again, Roost Tox and Merck Viv or Merck Sol are yeah. good options for oral herpes. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So that is herpes, cold sores and shingles and not a fun thing to talk about, but hey, that mess hurts. And we want you to be prepared, not scared. I still, I stole that. Oh, from that was good. I stole it from Carrie at Taproots. That's a <laughs> good one. Like, That's good. Thank you, Carrie. We are going to tag that one. That is going to be one of my, right. now I'm going to use it as well. That's right. And it's good going into summer. I know some people, especially um, oral fun. herpes, the sun being outside can really aggravate, at least for some people that I know. Very so, true. Yes. Uh, and um Carrie and I do a lot of Facebook lives and then she puts those on her her YouTube channel so there is um a Facebook live or a, um a YouTube video on her channel Taproots VA um that is about summer summer remedies and I believe herpes is in there but still sunburn and all kind of stuff 
or cold. It probably says it's probably cold sores, but we discuss, you know, the things all about summer and all the summer remedies and what's happening. And so go search for that. And we'll see you next time with the Materia Medica Monday. What are we doing? Is it RM I think it's RM Met. Yes. Awesome. Next up, RM Met for Materia Medica Monday. Thanks, Bree. Thank you. See you next time.